welcome to Graceful Healing, a podcast to get straight talk about healing and living again. My name is Maureen Lake. I'm a holistic health coach, speaker, author, and thyroid disease fighter. Each week, I'll be bringing you graceful conversations to inspire you to seek new ways to hit the reset button to catapult your health and vitality to new levels. Listen in and open your heart to all the new possibilities. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Today, my guest is Elaine Gardner. She's a holistic health expert and clinical nutritionist. Her story is really pretty amazing. It starts off with her being fairly ill and one of persistence in striving toward the outcome of advocating for yourself and her child. She provides us with incredible inspiration, knowledge, and resources for adopting a holistic lifestyle. Now, why does she do this and why did she go through what she went through? It was really to increase and protect her physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. If it wasn't for that Pilates instructor years ago that tuned her into a local practitioner who helped her with a body work, she wouldn't have even begun to understand and learn the method of NRT for muscle testing. It's pretty fascinating stuff, and I'm still so intrigued by this discussion that we had. Now Elaine's goal in her work is to inspire all Americans to prioritize their health and improve their self-care choices. And it's apparent that she's reached that goal after listening to her. She's so motivating, it's captivating to hear her story. So get ready to learn a wealth of health and knowledge, busting out with all new ideas. I know I did. Are you ready? Let's do this. Welcome, Elaine. Hi, everybody. I'm so lucky to have Elaine Gardner on my show today. I can't wait for you to hear and meet her. Her story is going to be empowerful. Hello, Elaine. How are you today? Hi, Maureen. I'm doing well. Thanks. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on my podcast as well. Elaine, can you share with my listeners a little bit about your personal story and particularly your journey about how you landed where you are today? Absolutely. So I started having health problems from a really young age, around age 14. And the initial things that happened to me, I'm chuckling because they were actually incredibly embarrassing. I had severe abdominal pain. And my sister, one of my sisters had just had appendicitis. So my symptoms were very similar. So my parents took me off to the hospital. And it was incredibly embarrassing to find out that I was just having severe premenstrual cramps. So you know, at that young age, I had my periods started fairly late. I don't remember how old I was, but it was pretty new to me. So you know, and and it wasn't something that was discussed a lot at home. So it was not something that I was open and comfortable discussing. So it was just a horribly embarrassing thing for me. So that that was the initial thing. And I'm sure that I had other more minor symptoms before that happened. I got sick a lot as a kid. And I got sick even more from that point on. And I had those incredible, severe premenstrual cramps for many, many years after that. And I had no tools to deal with them except for ibuprofen or Tylenol and just curling up in a ball and, and waving it out. And it was I was really uncomfortable. And I also had a lot of intestinal pain. I did not eat well. And the reasons why are probably a variety of things from the fact that I didn't feel well a lot of the time to I didn't have a lot of access to really good, healthy food that I enjoyed. I didn't have a lot of good role models in that way. Um, And I was just really busy at school. I also had a lot of emotional things going on, probably very normal from a teenage perspective. But they were very, very difficult for me to to just handle and be able to, to get through them. And I was also an athlete. And given how the rest of my body was performing, I didn't do so well. I loved my athletics. I was a dancer and a gymnast. and But my, my poor health choices just really made it very difficult for me to, to manage that level of intense physical activity. And I ended up with a lot of 
minor, thankfully, injuries. But, you know, it was just a constant battle for me to be trying to keep up with the things I loved and the condition that I was in. Oh, and, God. yeah, when I got out of high school, I went to college, initially started as a special education major and switched for a variety of reasons, but fortunately stumbled upon nutrition and exercise physiology and found something I was really passionate about. And but I was still having a lot of problems with my health. And so I was exploring those new avenues that were so interesting to me. And through a variety of school changes, as I was adjusting my major, I was also working as an aerobics instructor and ended up slipping the disc in my jaw. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, you hear about <laughs> slipping a disc in your neck, but not in your jaw. Yeah. And it was incredibly painful. It started a whole cascade of musculoskeletal problems for me. Chronic muscle spasms, numbling, numbness and tingling in my arms. My, my right arm used to go completely dead on me like it was asleep. It's just in really, really uncomfortable. Yeah. And yeah. So I found some alternative things during that time. Chiropractic care was tremendously helpful. I had a an appliance placed in my mouth that moved my jaw down and boarded. It allowed the disc to go back into place, but then my teeth were out of alignment, so they put me in braces. Hmm. It was just, it was a really difficult time emotionally, physically navigating all that. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to advocate for myself. I didn't know how to ask a lot of questions. So I was just going along and doing what was told of me and mm -hmm. not, not feeling so well. I was put on a lot of muscle relaxants because of the, the level of muscle spasms I was having, and it further exacerbated my intestinal discomfort. Mm -hmm. So it was just this one thing after another. But as I said, I, I did manage to figure out how to get through it all and function most of the time. And you were was, still in college then? That was through my college years, and wow. I did pretty well after. I wasn't working in the health field because I had already been through so much with my health. I just kind of needed to go out and live a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't pursuing a career in health at that point in time, and I was doing okay, massage and chiropractic and exercise and handling things fairly well so that I was functional most of the time, but I wasn't improving, and I wasn't still wasn't super healthy, and I still had a lot of intestinal discomfort. I had severe seasonal allergies that came on starting in my late teens or early 20s. I was still not nearly as well as I could be. And then when after my children were born, my health took another really, really deep nosedive. And I actually ended up in the emergency room one day with breathing trouble. Hmm. I had been home alone with my two young children. I was having trouble breathing. And I, I ended up having a full-blown panic attack, mm -hmm. which I had no idea. I'm not even sure I knew what a panic attack was, that there was such a thing at the time. I was just so terrified that I was going to pass out and something was going to happen to my kids and I had a panic attack. But I thought I was having a stroke because I went completely numb from head to toe and I couldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I managed to call my parents and my husband before I lost the ability to speak. And also, I think I called 911 or they did. Anyway, they were all on their way and uh, with stopped to the hospital and later discovered that I had a panic attack and not a stroke, which was good, of course, a much better option. But the original issue that was causing me to feel panicky was that I was having trouble breathing. And turns out that it was actually a very rare symptom of reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease or indigestion, which I wasn't aware that I had until then. And it took many months to figure out where that was coming from. So a very interesting pathway. And then my youngest son also, at about 18 months of age, started having chronic ear infections. He got that that winter, he got like every childhood virus you could possibly imagine. And he was sick from October to April. And I just said, you know, th my visit to the ER happened during that same time frame. And I said, there has got to be a better way for both of us. There's mm -hmm. got to be because they mm -hmm. just kept taking him on antibiotics. And he ended up with a lot of belly pain and the ear infections didn't go away. He ended up bursting his eardrum. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I, I was at the end of my rope and mm -hmm. I just said, there's got to be a better way. I've always wanted to have children. It is the one thing in my life that I always knew I wanted. I had these two beautiful little boys and all I wanted to do was enjoy them and enjoy my life. And I said, I'm going to figure out how to get well, how to get him well so that I can have that. And that commitment is actually what led me into finding the solutions for healing his body, healing my body, and then getting back to 
my studies and my passion about health. Wow. So I suffered from panic attacks years ago as well, but I honestly had no idea that it could be caused from reflux. Well, the, I was having trouble breathing, which was related to the reflux. Yeah. And because I thought I was going to pass out and that something happened to it with my kids, that's why I had a panic attack. Right on the panic. So, wow. Yeah. So it's not necessarily directly correlated to the reflux. It was just a series of things that happened in my case. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, because I, just because I've suffered from them as well, it is debilitating and so frightening because you don't know what's going on with you and you think the worst. And I know in my case, when I realized and was diagnosed with panic attacks, then it was like, seriously, where is that coming from? Because I really well, had no clue. But absolutely. It's, yeah, so deep seated into something. Right. And then a lot of people consider that just to be in a quote unquote mental health issue. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a physical health issue. And in my case, in particular, it was brought on by a physical symptom and just a really scary scenario. Right. But absolutely, your mood and emotion is directly connected to the health of your body, especially connected to the health of your gut. And that was definitely an issue for me. Mm -hmm. Did you find that that was an issue for your son as well when you started your healing journey? Well, by the time that I, I made a commitment to the holistic pathway, he had already been on, I had lost track of how many rounds of antibiotics. So in, at that point, yes, his gut was an absolute mess as well. Mm -hmm. When my kids were younger and were seeing their pediatrician, I don't know if it was in vogue at the time or what, They maybe they didn't know any better. But antibiotics were just handed out like water. You could come in with any kind of symptom. Here, just have them take an antibiotic. And the way that my generation destroyed their kids' guts without even realizing it is pretty dramatic. Yes, it's only been in the past, I don't know, 10 to 15 years or so, I think, that we're really starting to understand the damage that's being done, not only by oral antibiotics, but by antibiotics in the food supply. Oh, absolutely. What pathway did you journey towards to get to heal yourself? I know that you have information about restorative endocrinology and nutrition response testing. I'd love for you to speak a little bit to both of those, if you could. Sure. So the endocrinology piece comes in later. So what initially happened to me after I made that commitment to figure out how to get better, I actually said, well, you know, I've just had two children over the past four years and maybe I'm just in horrible physical shape because that's what most people consider first and foremost on their radar when it comes to health is, um, am I exercising? So I signed up for a Pilates class and that was a really instrumental decision because I actually told my Pilates instructor what was going on with me, and she recommended some local practitioners that I had never heard of before. And again, at that point in time, I was fully committed, and I was open to hearing about anything that was non-invasive and that might potentially help me and my son. Mm -hmm. So I called those people, and I started getting some body work done, craniosacral myofascial release therapy, and I was muscle tested. I think for the first time in my life or the first time in that way and put on some supplements, some healing supplements. And that opened up a huge pathway for me. I started to feel better. Of course, younger bodies have a lot less to deal with. So I was doing it with my son as well. And he started to see, I started to see remarkable quick improvement in him, which confirmed that we were doing the right thing. And I just kept going. Mm -hmm. So I fell in love with that work. And I started to learn. I signed up for a class to learn that method of muscle testing. And that initial program that I learned, I'm just looking in the back of my brain and my memory, I believe it was called Touch for Help. Hmm. And that was my first professional foray into, into muscle testing. And I, while I liked the modality, I loved the muscle testing. I was not in love with the way that they used muscle testing and their protocols. They were actually using synthetic supplements for healing. And I didn't even know there was a difference at the time between a synthetic nutrient and a whole food nutrient. Mm -hmm. I had no idea where nutrients came from when they came in supplement form. So over the year, I started practicing that, but I wasn't super comfortable with it. But I just kept, I was still on my pathway to healing and I just kept trying different practitioners. Sure to keep my body moving forward. And, and as I was exposed to those things, it started to 
form a, a long-term goal for me in my head. Like, what if I could put what this practitioner does together with what this practitioner does? It would be a much better system than what each one of them is doing individually. And that just willingness to be open and think that way led me down. Just uh, other programs started showing up for me. And then I eventually learned a muscle testing protocol named nutrition response testing and were, was exposed to Standard Process, which is a whole food supplements company. And that is when my interest in muscle testing and using nutrition for healing in a, from a supplementation perspective really just hit the head on the nail, as they say. Because mm-hmm. uh, it, it was everything that I had been thinking needed to come together. And I was really, really excited about the potential for that. And as I started using that in my practice, I started seeing really excellent results with people, much more so than I had seen with the previous protocols that I was using. So when you say muscle testing, for for anybody out there that's not 100% sure what that is, can you explain that a little bit? Yes. So muscle testing goes by many different names. Some people call it applied kinesiology. Muscle testing is just the most simplistic term for it. And then there are different systems, as I've already mentioned, touch for health, nutrition response testing. There are different experts that teach them, Dietrich Klinghart, John Fee, Freddie Uline, just the name of the people who develop these different types of systems. But they're all the same thing. And basically, well, they all come from the, the basic premise of using a muscle response to access information that is in the subconscious part of the brain, the part of your brain that's running all of your bodily functions on automatic without you having to think about it. So you can get an incredibly rich amount of information about what is happening in the body just by using muscle testing as a diagnostic tool. It's super quick and it's non-invasive. You get a ton of information and you can also determine what type of nutritional supplements and I use whole food nutritional supplements, so food and supplement form that your body needs to start functioning at a higher level than what it's currently doing. That's fascinating. That really is. Does your strength have anything to do with it? When, like if somebody's more muscular or not as fit? or No. No. Not okay. at all. Nope. Interesting. So I had been in love with muscle testing for years because of the results that I had received from it personally. The results I saw with my son. And then when I opened my own private practice in uh, November of 2004, I started implementing that and was getting really good results too. And starting to do the nutrition response testing and using the standard process supplements um, just really, really changed the results I was getting. So I was very passionate about continuing this work. And then I started studying restorative endocrinology with Dr. Janet Lang. And when I started implementing what I was learning from her, the results I was getting in my clients just went through the roof. It was it just brought everything together in such a better way. And the reason being is that the hormonal system is responsible for the breakdown, repair, and healing process in the body. So when you look at the hormonal or endocrine system first and foremost and in conjunction with everything else that's going on and give the system what it needs to get into balance, your ability to heal goes through the roof. Mm-hmm. And it, it works so much better and faster and more completely than what I was doing before. It was it, it was just so incredibly exciting to introduce that into my practice. Oh, I bet. Do you have to do any kind of testing for that to find out some baseline data before you start implementing some of your supplements and other protocols that you use? You can, if desired. And that is the way that Dr. Lang was treating her private clients. But because I already had muscle testing as a tool, I just took the information about the system that I was learning and integrated it into my muscle testing protocols, Hmm. and it worked just as well. So, well, I'm a huge fan of testing, but there's a lot of misinformation about testing, and a lot of people do it incorrectly and make incorrect assumptions based on testing. Mm -hmm. What I love about skipping the testing is that I can save people the money that they would spend on diagnostic tests test and go straight to healing protocols. Mm-hmm. So if somebody came to you with a already with a diagnosis, say hypothyroidism, and so you already have that diagnosis, would you pretty much know how to create a protocol for them? 
just by a diagnosis or do you still need to do, do you need to see somebody physically to do the muscle testing first or I'm just trying to. Yeah. The work that I do with my private clients, I would much rather see people. And the reason being is that everybody is unique and a healing protocol can be very much customized and people will do better if the program is really customized to their unique situation. So I could have five people that come in with a diagnosis of hypothyroidism and they all have a similar baseline for what they need, but potentially different things that they need to heal in order to get their thyroid back to full function. So again, and ex- excuse my ignorance, I find this fascinating. So I'm just trying to understand with the muscle testing, and you know that somebody says you say has an underactive thyroid, is there certain like body parts that you test for like, a, like, say, like with acupuncture, you know, there's certain parts of the body, that you know, about which system it might be disturbing or whatever. Is that the same with muscle testing? Like there's certain muscle groups or how does it work? So basically what I'm looking at is all of the glands and organs and individual body parts from through the digestive tract. So esophagus, the valve at the bottom of the esophagus, the stomach, digestive enzymes, small intestine, large intestine, all the individual hormonal glands, pituitary, thyroid, we're looking at them all individually and then considering how they're working together as a system as well. Wow. So it's very holistic, looking at everything from head to toe, because obviously a thyroid issue is a hormonal issue, but there could be other things that are going on in the system that are also affecting the body's ability to heal and get the thyroid back up to full function. Mm-hmm. So we get the body as a whole and we work through the system as a whole. That's really cool. It really it is. Is. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I bet. I bet. So I just can't, I mean, my mind is just kind of blowing here thinking of how impactful and how many different types of women you must help. I mean, (laughs) when you think about your endocrine system, and then like you said, just, I can think of a whole slew of, you know, chronic illnesses and everything else that a lot of people are just taking their daily pill every day and hoping for the best. And that's why I love having people like you as a guest on my podcast because there's so many other ways to heal that I personally had never heard of either one of these different modalities or treatment plans before. So I'm so intrigued and love hearing about it. I really do. Yeah, it is fascinating. And one of my long-term goals just professionally is to help shift people's mindsets about how they take care of themselves and how their bodies work. Because we, we've kind of left that information up to the experts and it's been kind of trained that you really have to study hard and long to be able to understand that. But you're the one living in your body. You're the one making your lifestyle choices and you are really the expert. Exactly. And yes, you, you need some information to go with, but it, but it is definitely within everyone's grasp to understand how their body works and to really, really get, be able to develop a healthy lifestyle that makes them feel great on a day-to-day basis and significantly reduces their odds of facing a lot of the health challenges that we're having in this day and age. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a question. I think I know the answer to, but I'm still going to ask it anyways. (laughs) To get back to the testing that you do and the whole food nutrition, I'm assuming that depending on how people test the outcome of their assessment that you do, you can help design their own dietary program, whether it might be that they need to be vegan or Mediterranean, or do you get that specific with diet dietary approaches? Or so that's really my question. I'm just really curious about the nutritional piece of it and how you recommend food choices. Yes, it's a really important question. But I don't think I would answer it in the exact way that you presented it. So through a lot of personal trial and error, I have learned that there is no one correct way of eating that will work for everybody, even if they have the same diagnosis. So we're seeing a lot of that dietary guidance in correlation to a diagnosis. And while that sometimes can be super helpful, oftentimes it's not going to be individualized enough. And what I have come to believe above anything else is that quality is the most important factor that you can consider about eating because we have a very complicated 
food supply with a lot of hidden and risky ingredients that sabotage our health and override our body's natural ability to be intuitive and understand what's actually going on for us. And when we remove those things, not only do we remove things that are that are contributing to health problems, but we're also getting back in touch with what feels good in our own bodies, which allows us to understand what what our own bodies, our individual bodies really need. Well, that's Whether that's something that's more plant-based or more meat-based, I'm not a fan of vegan uh, just because there are certain nutrients that only come from animal products. Mm -hmm. But any any other dietary guidelines that recommend really high-quality food, and that's that's an easy sentence to say, but it's a lot more difficult to understand what that actually means. But anything that's that's telling you to eat really high quality food is worth considering and experimenting to see what feels right in your body. Mm -hmm. So how how is your son doing today? Oh, my son's doing fantastic. He'll be 20 in a couple months. I got him through all of his intestinal healing. We got rid of his his seasonal allergies. You know, he's tall and handsome and strong <laughs> and flourishing. That's wonderful. And you, I'm assuming you're doing just as well? Oh, yeah. The most interesting thing to me is that about my own health journey is that my health gets better every single year, even though I've been healthy from from what many people's perspectives for years. It just keeps getting better. And I'm going to be 53 in a few weeks. And that is the exact opposite of what most Americans experience as they get older. You're right. Well, that's so exciting, Elaine. I love hearing about not only your journey, but your programs as well. And the different things that you've learned along the way. It's pretty interesting, I'll tell you. So for any of the listeners that want to contact you or to learn more about your programs, I know that you prefer to see people more face-to-face, -face, You, but do you have anything available online? for? Yes. Okay, great. So if you share that, that would be awesome. I do have a private clinical nutrition practice where I work with the clients one-on-one -on -one with muscle testing, specializing in hormone balancing, and I design whole food supplementation programs for healing purposes. And that website is healingjourneyma.com. But a few years ago, I realized that I could only help so many people in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And I'm not the kind of person who can work 80 hours a week without killing myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was offering my clientele a lot of lifestyle counseling, which I wasn't charging for, mm -hmm. and realized that that information could help a lot of people. So I actually created a second website. And I have a, a ton of information there. And that while that website is in the works, it is almost newly updated and polished. It is designyourhealthylife.com. I have a weekly newsletter that I publish and that I talk about a variety of health topics because one of the things that I've learned along my own journey is that Health is more than just addressing our physical bodies. It's all about mental, emotional, spiritual health and addressing our beliefs. And it's a, it's a whole package. Right. So that's something I talk a lot about on the newsletter post that I do. And I do have a free quiz type of just a quick report. A lot of people, even when they're eating healthy, are still being exposed to hidden ingredients in our food supply that are putting them at risk. So I actually created a report probably going to be renamed in the next couple of weeks. But right now it's called You Are What You Eat, Hidden Dangers in Our Food. And that's available for free on my website. And I have my first online program is all about our food system because it is the most common conversation I have with my clients. And there are so many details regarding our the complicated choices that we have available to us that I just spent a year pulling all of the information out of my head that I had accumulated over decades about our food system and created an online program about it. So oh, that awesome. is also, yeah, yeah, that's also available there along with just a recipe section as well, which is included in the full program, but is also available for purchase separately. Oh, that's and, amazing. Yeah, I bet the whole food supply system is, oh gosh, when I've done some reading on that, it's pretty eye opening and jaw dropping. It really is. And there's a ton of confusion and misinformation and it's a really big mess and mm -hmm. labels are, there are labels that are unregulated so that people think that they're purchasing certain things that are actually protecting them and they're being misinformed and lied to. So you just, you have to do the research and put in the time to understand what, 
labels are actually legally defined and have meaning and what that meaning is and which could be outright lies that are just tricking you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's really, really tragic. I also talk about food planning, meal planning, because a lot of if you can't eat well without a plan, and a lot of people don't plan ahead, and then they just default to whatever is readily available around them, which even if it looks like it's going to be good, again, could have hidden things that are just not healthy for your body. So, mm -hmm. Or you run down the street and get some carry out because you didn't plan ahead of time. So Exactly. Yeah. And how to customize, how to listen to your body and customize what you're eating so that it works really well for you as opposed to just listening to some expert on the TV that's telling you this is the right way of eating. And it, like I learned the hard way that not all of those recommendations, even if they're healthy, are going to be good for you, feel right for your body. Well, you're doing some amazing, important work, Elaine. Thank you for that. Thank you. Well, I'm really, really proud to have had you on the show today. Thank you so much, Elaine. And I will make sure that I have all the information that you shared verbally as far as where people can contact you on my podcast website as well. So there'll be a live link going directly towards Elaine's information. So you can reach her that way as well. Thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure being here. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today. This episode is brought to you by my book, The Graceful Advocate, taking control of your life after a diagnosis of thyroid disease. You can find it currently on Amazon. I love it because my friends call it a purse book. They keep it with them when they go to the pharmacy, grocery store, or even to the doctor's office. It's a great little guide to keep you on track and informed. I can't wait for next week when I get to see you back on the pod. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate you so much. If you ever need someone to chat with about your healing journey, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me through my website at maureenlake.com.